Apple's M1 Pro and Max lineup are already proven to be incredible machines, but the reality is that the majority of us can still do everything we need to do and more on the much less expensive M1 machines. So today I want to give you some reminders of everything that the M1 chip will still be capable of in 2022 so that you don't go rushing out to buy something far too expensive for what you really need. If you're like me and you have a regular day job but you like to do creative stuff in the evenings or the weekend, the M1 chip is going to be absolutely perfect for you. I picked up an M1 Mac Mini last year and it's completely changed the way that I work on my videos. But before we get onto that fun stuff, I do just want to touch on those everyday tasks. Because to be honest, if you do just do light email work, then you can even get away with that on an iPad. But for those of us who find themselves in huge spreadsheets that crunch a lot of data, massive Google slide decks, or even 50 plus Google Hangout calls, the Mac Mini is a brilliant computer for that kind of stuff. And that will go for any of the M1 MacBooks as well. It sounds a bit ridiculous, but my work issue computer actually broke down after too much load being placed placed on the GPU from huge hangout calls. And so I actually had to work on my Mac Mini for a few months until I got a replacement. During that time, it was just an absolute hero of a machine, especially when you consider that in the evenings and on the weekends, I've been editing 4K footage shot on a DSLR, and this computer has been completely working within my range of capability as a hobbyist videographer. You can see from all of the speed tests that the big tech channels are running that the M1 Pro and Max are incredibly powerful chips. But how many of us are really editing 8k footage on a regular basis and applying really complex color grading that's going to cause massive rendering times and even on the rendering times does it really matter for people who are just doing this as a hobby i can see that it makes a massive difference if you work in a professional setting where you need to get videos edited and shipped as quickly as possible but i don't really have a problem waiting half an hour for something to render and to be honest i rarely do when i'm using this computer for the kind of videos that i'm making which rarely break 10 gigabytes I don't have any problems with stuttering or any drops in frame rate as I'm editing videos. The only thing that sometimes bugged me is that the waveform on my A-roll won't load quickly enough for me to be able to see where I'm up to. But that's a complete luxury considering my 2016 MacBook completely burnt out trying to do this kind of stuff. When it comes to photo editing and digital art, I've got an iPad Pro with the M1 chip, which admittedly is top of the range and very close in price to the, those M1 Pro computers. But I feel like I can justify that considering it's more of a companion to my desktop computer rather than something that's gonna compete with it for the same tasks. And although I'm absolutely a hobbyist photographer and digital artist as well, I've definitely never had any problem using Lightroom or Procreate on my iPad with the M1 chip. The only time I've ever seen a slowdown or felt a bit of overheating on my iPad Pro was when I was trying to edit something with about 50 different layers in Procreate, but I mean, that's not a regular occurrence for me. And it just goes to show that the M1 chip is incredibly powerful for amateurs, and even when I'm pushing myself to the limit, I still don't really have anything that's gonna block me from getting the things I want to create out into the world. Which is to say that the Mac Mini and the iPad Pro from last year are still incredibly powerful devices. But if you do want a powerful computer that you can take with you wherever you go, the MacBook Air from last year is still an incredible choice. And it's going to come in at around half the price of the latest 14 inch base model with the M1 Pro chip. The only thing I'd advise is to try and bump that up a little bit to the 16 gigabytes of RAM just to future proof you and make sure that you're going to get enough space to grow as a creative as well as just do what you're doing at the moment. If you do want to see my reaction to get my hands on that M1 Mac Mini, I'm going to link my video up here. And who knows, maybe you can see the progress that I've made as a creator since getting my hands on this machine.